Happy Galentine's Day, everyone. I'm really happy to be here to talk to you about some of the practical, practical aspects as well as some major questions you may have about egg freezing. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the talk that we like to give you because we can dispel any of those crazy myths that you've heard about egg freezing, like it'll take six months, your hormones are gonna go crazy and nobody will ever speak to you again. So let's get started with that part. Okay, so the egg freezing how-to guide. So it is a very personal process and that's why it's so important for you to go to a trusted reproductive endocrinologist who will have done all of your hormone testing and spoken to you about the process and really determined the right protocol for you. Because everyone is different, there's no cookie cutter medicine with this, uh, and we really try and practice that way. So sometimes you'll be put on a birth control pill, if you're already on a birth control pill or another form of contraception, sometimes we keep you on that, you don't necessarily have to stop it or we may start with your menstrual cycle. And when we do that, we usually start on the second or third day in the very beginning of the menstrual cycle. So what you're actually taking is that magic FSH, and you hear us talking about that often when we're talking about doing your workup. That's follicle-stimulating hormone. That's the same hormone that your brain makes to tell your ovaries, okay, pick this egg and let it be the one to grow and mature that month and be the one to ovulate and possibly fertilize. If it fertilizes and implants, you get pregnant. If it doesn't, then you'll end up getting a period. So the drug that we're giving you is a synthetic version of follicle-stimulating hormone. When you're taking that follicle-stimulating hormone, it's trying to get all those other little resting eggs, besides the one egg that you normally make naturally, to grow and mature. So the intention is for you to get as many eggs as possible in one sitting. And that's why we say egg freezing or even in vitro fertilization often mimics the menstrual cycle. So you'll be taking those drugs, the injections, usually anywhere between two and four injections for on average seven to 10 days. Again, that's why it's important to have a really good relationship with your reproductive endocrinologist in their office because you will see them a lot in this short time frame. And I always tell people, you know, realistically, we need a good two weeks for you to complete this process where you have time, you're focused, you're not going on any fancy vacations, uh, and we can really put all our best into this, this um, in the process. So when you're doing those visits, a lot of times you're coming early in the morning, uh, again, depending on where you're going, starting at 6.30 or 7 a.m., uh, and coming in early, getting your blood drawn, having ultrasounds, and then moving on to getting instructions for that day. At the end of that approximately two-week time frame, um, the injection that is one of the most important that you may hear a lot about is the trigger shot, or HCG injection. How to, you can see by our lovely picture here, that's the one injection you may need someone to help you with. The others are subcutaneous, meaning that they go right underneath your skin. They're pretty easy to give yourself, and you shouldn't need much help with that. But after, again, the end when we've seen those eggs grow and mature, and you're ready to have the egg retrieval where we remove the eggs, you'll need a little help with the HCG injection because it goes in the upper outer quadrant of your butt. So the egg retrieval. So this is the one day that you'll likely need off of work. Um, the egg retrieval is a surgical procedure, but it has minimal risk, as my partner, Dr. Chen, likes to say. You know, you're more at risk on the Garden State Parkway than you are actually having an egg retrieval. But what happens in the egg retrieval is we put you to sleep, um, we use a little bit of sedation, really, so you're not moving around, and then we're using a vaginal ultrasound, which um, I should mention also, that's what you've been having as you've gone through the process. Um, vaginal ultrasounds in the vagina. It has a little needle attached to it and it goes in through the vaginal wall into the ovary to remove the eggs. And what we're really doing is draining the fluid surrounding the egg. It's called the follicular fluid. And passing that off to our embryologist who sit right next to us in the operating room. So you won't have any abdominal incisions. It's not like you may have heard of laparoscopy or a C-section, nothing to that extent. It's all done through the vagina takes about 10 to 15 minutes, and then recovery is about an hour or two before you can go home. You have to make sure you can eat, walk around, and go home, and many people are fine to go to work the next day. So as I mentioned, the recovery, um, that day is a full day off, 
and then you'll have an answer as to how many eggs were retrieved that day. And then the next day you'll get an answer as to how many eggs were mature, which would be appropriate for fertilization. It could be frozen to be used in the future. So you do get some really good immediate feedback. The next day, most patients are totally fine. You can use a little bit of Tylenol for pain if you need it, uh, and then you're out and about as usual. So before I go into the questions, because uh, part of them you may, have, you may ask about the actual procedure, how are you going to feel doing it? What are the side effects? So the side effects that most people would complain about would be general mooniness and bloating. Not like I'm going to you know, hurt somebody mooniness and bloating, but in general um, you're, you may have premenstrual type sy symptoms as well. So most people don't complain of anything more than that, but we do expect you to feel a little bit bloated. Remember, instead of the one egg a month you're making, you are making definitely more than that. So questions that we often get asked, how many eggs do you get from an egg freezing cycle? How many eggs do I need per child? How long can my eggs stay frozen? And what's the process when I'm ready to use them? Okay, so how many eggs do I get from an egg freezing cycle? It totally depends. The average number is six to 10. It depends on your age, your ovarian reserve, which is something that your doctor will have tested at the very first visit, and they can give you a general idea of what that means for you and what your expectations could be for the number of eggs. Sometimes you end up getting more and sometimes you end up getting less, but on average, um, across the board, would be around 10. Now, how many eggs do I need per child? And on my next slide, I'm gonna go into that in, in detail, but it again depends on your age. At the age at which you freeze the eggs is going to be the most important predictor of outcome for having a future pregnancy. So, you know, we say for, give you a really good shot about 18 to 21, and again, I'll give you a little snapshot of, of uh, how important that is. How long can they stay frozen, right? As Dr. Chen mentioned, you may never use these, um, but they can be, stay frozen in theory for a very, very long time. Trust me, they will be perfectly fine by the time you come back to use them. Our practice, we ask that you just come back before age 50, um, but in general, you'll be back and the eggs will still be good. Uh, now what's the process when you're ready to use the eggs? What happens is, You'll come into the office now with your sperm of choice, whatever that may be. We'll set up a cycle for you to thaw the eggs. Uh, we'll fertilize them. We will use a procedure called ICSI, or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. And what that is is isolating one sperm, again from that sperm of choice, and putting it directly into the egg to assist with fertilization. And we have to do that because the shell of the egg is hard from being frozen. That creates an embryo. The embryo is then grown in the laboratory and we transfer the embryo back into your uterus. The actual transfer process is pretty straightforward. For most people it feels like nothing more than a pap smear and takes about 10 minutes. You're completely awake and we do it under ultrasound guidance and you get to see all kinds of cool pictures and watch the ultrasound as we're doing it. So uh, it's really a cool experience. The prep work for that can be, again, depending on you, what kind of menstrual cycle you have at the time, what your age is, and what your doctor chooses for you. But I would say, in general, it takes about a month of prep, anywhere from three weeks to a month of prep, to get ready for that embryo transfer, usually with taking some oral uh, estrogen, or sometimes we use your, your own natural menstrual cycle. So this is a chart that was presented at ASRM, which is um, our society that really provides us with guidelines for egg freezing. And I've just found this to be so powerful in my counseling of patients. And uh, some of the work was actually done here in New Jersey with Reprogenetics, but predicting the likelihood of live birth for elective egg freezing. And you know, I told you that you may want to get about 18 to 20 eggs to give you the chance of a live birth. What we're looking at here is the percentage of at least one live birth. So depending on your age and the number you have frozen. So let's say you get that average number of 10, you're less than 35, you have a 52% chance of a live birth. Guess what? That's just like our fresh IVF rates. So this, I think, is a great testament to how the technology has come so far to let egg freezing really 
be equal to um, a fresh IVF cycle and how it really is worth it to do it. Also is a good testament to the younger you freeze your eggs, the better. Because if you look here at someone who's 42, right, and they have, again, that average of 10 eggs, they have an 11% chance of taking home a baby. So you can see as you go higher in age, there's a drastic difference as well. Um, and the number of eggs you really need definitely increases. So that would be part of your counseling. If you're older, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go through with egg freezing. I think you just need to understand kind of what that means for you. It may take more than one cycle to achieve your goals with that. Egg IQ is something that we've developed that uh, helps you assess your reproductive health. So you have time. Um, if you have time, just go ahead and, and take our test to find out how good is your reproductive health, uh, how healthy are your eggs. And remember, this is a great intro tool. We'll kind of give you some insight as to what you're working with. Um, but always, always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us or any other reproductive specialist um, to kind of start the process and be informed, take charge, and stay empowered.